Hello everyone and welcome back to AWS Simplified. Today I'm going to be talking to you about stream processing with Kinesis Firehose. So let's start this out by going over what Kinesis Firehose is. So what is Kinesis Firehose? So it allows you to deliver streaming or event data into destinations such as BI databases, data exploration tools, dashboards, and even other AWS services such as S3, Redshift, or Elasticsearch. So essentially it allows you to have a single data ingestion point and provides a means to deliver that data to some kind of destination that you specify when you're setting up your Firehose stream. And it's a fully managed AWS service with elastic scaling that responds to increased throughput. So what that means is that as the rate of data that is being sent to your stream increases, the rate of output will also increase. The infrastructure and capabilities of elastic scaling are all automatically provided for you. So there's no special configuration that you need to do. And third, it allows you to batch large numbers of events into a single output file. So kind of what I was alluding to before, uh, when you're ingesting data, that data is going to be kind of compressed into a single output file, and that's going to be sent to one of your destinations. Uh, and this is useful in a practical sense. If you can imagine if you have a large number of individual events that are occurring in your application and you want to save them to some database, obviously you don't want to do inserts every single time an event occurs. It's much more efficient to perform batch inserts on large numbers of events and that's kind of how firehose works it'll batch a large number of events into a single output file for you so let's move on to how it works from a high level perspective so i have here a diagram that has been pulled off of the aws website under the kinesis firehose section uh, so we have data input section and this could be anything from you know iot devices could be mobile applications could be your back-end services anything really that is generating data or generating events um, in the context of your application. So this information can be put to a Kinesis Firehose uh, endpoint, and this is using the Kinesis Firehose SDK. So you just directly put your information to Firehose from your application or from some kind of intermediary layer. So Firehose will automatically scale up if the rate of throughput increases when delivering to your stream. And when your data reaches a sufficient size or a sufficient period of time has elapsed, it'll deliver that data into one of the delivery destinations. Uh, so the ones that are currently offered are Amazon S3, Amazon Redshift, Amazon Elasticsearch Service, and Splunk. Um, so you can choose one of these delivery destination mechanisms. Uh, so let's think about how you would use this practically speaking. So say you were delivering your data to S3, you may want to use something like Athena, which allows you to perform SQL-like queries on your S3 data files uh, for kind of BI or intelligence purposes. Similarly, you may have your delivery destination set up as Redshift, um, and this can do kind of the same thing. You can have BI engineers that are performing queries or have dashboards that are backed by Amazon Redshift. Or if you're looking for something that for more high availability or flexible queries that can scale horizontally, uh, you may want to choose Elasticsearch service for that. And all of these destinations are basically just a means to analyze your data. You know, I mean, you can set to any one of these, but depending on your use case, you may choose one over the other. So this is how it works at a high level. Uh, let's move on now to a more specific example of how you can set this thing up and why it may be useful. Okay, so how it works with a real example. So uh, I'm going to use a concept of transactions here, maybe credit card transactions or purchases or refunds. So, so say we have a transactions SNS topic and the data that's being published to this SNS topic looks like this. You have a transaction ID, uh, that's just some number. Uh, you have an amount that is corresponding to this transaction and you have a type, whether it's a purchase or a refund. And then maybe you have customer details, which is some complex object. So as events are occurring, as people are buying things in the real world, messages are being sent to this transactions topic. And subscribe to that topic is a Lambda, a transaction processor Lambda. So for every event that occurs on the topic, you're going to have an invocation of this transaction processor. And this transaction processor is going to be coded such that it's going to perform a put operation on your Kinesis Firehose endpoint. So anytime an event occurs, it's going to be delivered to your SNS, which is going to be delivered to your Lambda, and your Lambda is going to publish into your Kinesis Firehose stream.
So from here, you have two options. Uh, I'm gonna be using S3 in this case. So the first one is just raw delivery to S3. So as you're ingesting data into your Firehose stream after a period of time, that's called a buffer interval, and you get to specify what your buffer interval is, or a maximum file size is hit, and you also get to specify that number, that's called your buffer size, a file will be emitted to S3, and the contents of your file will look like an aggregate of the input. So if our input looks like this, this was one record, the output in this S3 file will be a list of records, and the way Firehose delivers to S3 and kind of organizes your data is by year, month, day. So it uses a familiar folder-like pattern so that if you're looking for your data in S3 manually, you can actually find it in a pretty reasonable way. And then it'll also append a hash um, onto your file name if there's because there's going to be many files that are being outputted very rapidly if your throughput increases. So this is kind of the baseline functionality. And if you want to take this to the next level, level, what you can potentially do is subscribe a Lambda to the S3 put notification. So anytime an event here occurs, you can trigger a Lambda function that can pull this data and perform some kind of analysis on it and maybe put it elsewhere or do some kind of business logic that's specific for your application. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of flow, I have another video on that. I'll put it in the description section below. Uh, so this is option one, the baseline. So in the second option, you can have something called a transformer. And in the Kinesis Firehose world, your Lambda is the only option to be a transformer. So what can happen is that as opposed to directly writing to S3, you can first invoke a Lambda function with a payload of what would have been delivered to S3. So what would have been delivered is something that looks like this. And then maybe perform some analysis on it before finally delivering it to S3. So let's walk through that a little bit because that was a little bit confusing. So if we're using a transformer, our Firehose stream will invoke our Lambda function with a payload that looks like this. And this is just a mirror image of this image here. So just kind of blown up a little bit. And then the transformer function can do some business logic on it. So maybe we had some kind of use case where we just want to aggregate this data. We don't care about all the individual transactions. We just want to know how many purchases did we have? What was the total amount of purchases? So we can quickly answer that question by using a transformer. So anytime a file like this is emitted from your Firehose stream, it's going to be delivered to your Lambda first. And after you perform your analysis, you can deliver that file to S3. And maybe in your Lambda function, the transformation step was to aggregate your your purchases and refunds. So you have a new output object that says purchases, and these are the IDs that correspond to the purchases, and these are the sum of all of the underlying purchases values. And the same thing for refunds. So these are the IDs of the refunds, and this was the sum of the refunds over this time period or over this object. So this is a practical example of how it works with a real life example. Uh, now, before we close this out, I wanted to talk about quickly the best practices or gotchas that you should be aware of when you're using Kinesis Firehose. Uh, so the first one is buffer size and buffer interval and to pick your settings appropriately. So like I was saying before, buffer size is the maximum size of the output file in the S3 case specifically. So you can set this, I believe, as low as one and as high as 128. So depending on your application, if you want very small or very large files, pick this appropriately. And the buffer interval, like I was explaining before, is the duration in which it will output files if your maximum size, if your buffer size is not hit. So what that means is that say your buffer size is 10 megabytes and your buffer interval is five minutes. If 10 megabytes of data aren't pushed into the Firehose stream in a five minute period, by default, Firehose will emit a file regardless of the fact that it hasn't hit the buffer size. So what this also means is that if you have a period of bursty traffic and you have many, many events that are being sent to your Firehose stream, the rate of files being created obviously will increase in response to the increased throughput on your Firehose stream. And each file that's being delivered will be of the buffer size that you specify. So depending on your application, you may want a small or large uh, buffer size, or you may want a small or large buffer interval. So just be aware of this setting and how it works and pick your setting appropriately. Second point is that by default, you have a one megabyte per second default put limit. So if you are putting to the fire hose endpoint, um, this is the default out of the box limit. You can of course request a rate increase for this and you do this through the AWS console by contacting support. But just be aware that if you have a very high throughput application, this is the default limit. So you may wanna adjust this accordingly. 
And the third is that you should probably set up a retention policy on delivery if you're using something like S3. Uh, so you may not want to keep all your files around forever because obviously that's going to incur a lot of cost. So maybe after a period of time, you want to move your old files to a more long-term storage solution, something like Glacier, uh, just so you can reduce your costs. Uh, so this is kind of a good idea if you're dealing with an application that has a lot of data or you just want to be very careful with your spending on AWS. Us. And the final one is uh, similar to the previous, but consider using gzip compression for delivery. Uh, so this is a setting that you can specify when you're setting up your stream when delivering it to S3. Uh, you can just deliver it as is, as a normal file, or you can compress it. Uh, it's particularly useful when you compress it, obviously, because in S3 you are paying for storage size. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on next week's. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.